false confidence, but yet a left hand comes in. Hand. And all of a sudden, Lewis has his hands down. No combination! Good right hand. The 90s were the golden era of heavyweight. Tyson, Holyfield, Bo, and dozens of elite hunters after their heads. The king in this lion's pride was Olympic champion Lennox Lewis. His right to wear the crown was not recognized for a long time, but with his victories, the Briton was able to conquer a skeptical America. He started at the end of the Tyson era and finished at the dawn of the Klitschko era. He brought the titles back to London, defeated everyone he fought, and walked away a champion. Today, we'll look back at the legendary career of one of the most technical heavyweights in history. Look, bro. Six foot five. They will know if I fight. He's got heart. Right, you can't take that. Lewis was born in London, but his boxing homeland was Canada. His mother moved there when Lennox was seven years old. It wasn't until five years later that she managed to move the boy in with her. The Canadian kids didn't like his London accent too much. Uh, it's, it's interesting because, you know, when I'm, when I'm over there, they say I sound English. When I come over here to England, they say I sound American, so I can never win. And I always say I have a mid-Atlantic accent. <laughs> and to protect himself from attacks, Lewis went to a boxing gym. The reason why I took up boxing because uh, at the time, the place, the school I was going to, they had surrounding schools and every month they would have a dance at different schools. And there was one school, uh, KCI, they had their tough guys and we were the tough guys for Cameron Heights and uh, they wanted to fight us. So we said, okay, if you want to fight us, come down to the police boxing club and fight us because we realize if we beat them up down there, we won't get in trouble. It's a boxing club and the police is there and everything, so we won't get in trouble. So I went down there, waited for the guys. The guys didn't show up. Then the next month, dance happened, seen the same guys. We said, hey, you must have forgot. Make sure you're there at this time. It's the police boxing club. They said, yeah, we're going to be there. And I said, okay, good. Went down there again. They never showed up. Then all of a sudden, a trainer came up to me and said, hey, you, come, I want you to move around with this little guy. I looked over, seen the little guy, I said, little guy, okay. Put on some gloves, went in the ring. His name was Bobby Prue at the time. And let me tell you, he was good. I couldn't even hit him. Hit me in the nose, my eyes started watering. I was saying, no, nah, no, nah, this ain't for me. He said, no, 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 no. Put on the gloves again, I want you to move around with this guy. Bigger guy now. <laughs> I'm like, wow, all right put on the gloves, and I started doing my Muhammad Ali impression, dancing around and, you know, hit, uh, throwing out the job, and it felt good. It felt like a game of tag, and I was excited about it. And uh, what I loved about it, I was also d doing American football in high school at the time, and we were really good. And we actually went all the way to the championship and lost. The reason why we lost, two guys dropped the ball. 50 guys that start, start crying after that. On the bus ride home, 50 guys are crying. I'm saying I'm not crying. It wasn't my fault. You know, it was those guys' fault. Then I realized, you know, in boxing, it's an individual sport. It really all depends on you. And even if you win or lose, you get a trophy. And I wanted to build up my trophy collection as well. And also, the coaches were uh, encouraging me, saying, you know, you're going to be pretty good one day. You should keep it up. So that's what really got me into boxing. He went on to become world junior champion and represented Canada in the Olympics at the age of 18. Los Angeles, 1984. Scandalous games, where the socialist camp countries did not go. Before the tournament, Lewis had a chance to work with a young Mike Tyson. I remember going to the Catskills when I was, uh, I won the world junior championships in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. And I remember the American team was saying, oh, well, you never fought the best. I'm like, didn't fight the best. I thought Americans said the best team. Yeah, but one guy, he doesn't like taking planes and his managers don't like taking planes either. So I'm like, who's that? And they told me it was Mike Tyson, custom model. So me and my trainer, we left Canada and we drove all the way up there. And while we were up there, Razor Ruddock was up there and 
they said, oh, Razor Ruddick came to spar with us. I said, okay, I'll spar with you. I'm here for four days. So first time Tyson actually met me, you know, he was a nice guy, really nice guy. He took me in his room, showed me some old flicks that I've never seen before of old time fighters. He would tell me about each fighter, like he studied them. And then, uh, you know, this is where he got his old style, his, his style of fighting from. And uh, first day in the first day in the gym, Bell went. He came across and he was trying to kill me. Like you know, I did my Muhammad Ali thing. Obviously, stayed away from his power. But the first day was really hectic, and then the second day was a little hectic, and it got better as it went along. And then the last day is I got actually the better of him the last day. And I remember Customato saying, "Mike, you're gonna meet him someday. Don't you do that." And that always echoed in my mind that will we, we ever fight will we ever fight because customado said that we're gonna fight wow. and it did happen but let's not get ahead of ourselves and let's go back to the moment when lennox returned from training with tyson and took part in the olympic games in the first round of the olympics lewis knocked out muhammad yusuf he's never been defeated in so what a right hand oh he went down like a ton of bricks mr dobro but already in the quarterfinals, Tyrell Biggs, the world senior champion, was waiting for him. Lewis worked the first round, throwing fast jabs. Biggs was fighting back, controlling the distance, okay, double dunks, and then actively scoring points. In the box, so just looking and waiting and anticipating. Lewis had some shots on target, but couldn't land a clean punch. Lewis of Cannon. Lewis, good enough to have beat. The beginning of the third round was successful. You should have heard the Canadian. But it was not enough. Biggs won and then won the Olympics and already in the fall began his career in the pros. At the home games, Team USA was on fire, taking nine of the 12 gold medals. And Lewis returned to Canada to prepare for the next Olympic cycle. It was to make me a better boxer. Plus I was still young at the time, uh, 17 and uh, I was still in school. And I was so close to winning the gold medal, you know. Uh, Quarterfinals. Yeah, it was the quarterfinals. If I had a better draw, I would actually be in a silver medalist. Didn't have that much world experience. I realized uh, Tyrell Biggs had a lot of world experience. At that time, he was going over to Russia, all these different Eastern Bloc countries to get gain that experience. And I still was raw and um, still learning the trade of being a great amateur. And I was actually put in with him and I realized that, you know, what it was, it was just the, the fact that he had more uh, competition than I had did and knew what to do at that, that point. But I was definitely stronger than him, but just raw talent. Under the guidance of Arnie Beam and Adrian Teodorescu, he picked up the pace gradually. After a disappointing 1986 World Championships, he won the Commonwealth Games and then reached the final of the Pan American Games, where he lost closely to Jorge Luis Gonzalez. However, he soon took revenge on the North American champion, and with that background, he went to Seoul for the 1988 Olympics. Cuba boycotted the Games again. This made Luis' task easier. He started the tournament with an early win over Crispin Madera. In the quarterfinals, European champion Ulrich Kaden tried to stop him and ended up on the floor as well. His semi-final opponent was withdrawn due to injury, and Lennox fought Riddick Abo in the fight for gold. It was interesting because while we're in the Olympic Village and everything, you know, you heard from a lot of the American team like, yo, you know, they were coming up to me wishing me good luck. And I was like, the American team is wishing me good luck. They want me to uh, beat their heavyweight. And, you know, his name's Riddick Bowen. and he's kind of like mouthy and he's pretending he's Muhammad Ali and they don't like him. So I said, don't worry, I'm going to knock him out. The Briton was moving forward. The American was ready to chop. Abo decided to take the initiative. He, and what really made me give it to him, he hit me with a great uppercut. And I went back after the first round and I said, the guy blooded my nose and that even got me more steamed. Lennox began to hit harder and harder. Ah! Yes! 
After the second knockdown, the referee stopped the fight. In the future, Bo would become world champion and the first to stop Evander Holyfield. Lewis, in turn, brought Canada its first gold medal in boxing in 56 years. I always told people, you know, Britain is my mother and Canada is a country that nurtured me. And, uh, you know, even if I would tell them, you know, I was born in England, raised in Canada, and they don't have a professional uh, system over there for boxing, Britain has a better system than, uh, than Canada. I didn't want to get lost in the shuffle with Don Kings and the Tyson and the Holyfields in America. So I came back to a, Brit, uh, to a place where I was born, Britain, where a country that loves boxing. And I wanted a country behind me when I, when I went into my professional boxing. So the kingdom suddenly had the best heavyweight of the coming era. Late 80s. Television is taking over the world. The Iron Curtain is falling and boxing is ruled by Iron Mike Tyson. Lewis saw his goal of becoming champion and facing him. The best promoters in the world followed him around. And uh, it's important that, you know, I turn pro and have everything on my side. Frank Maloney phoned me up after meeting with different people, uh, Mickey Duff, Jarvis Astaire, um, uh, Don King, uh, Bob Arum, all these different people. And Frank Maloney said, don't sign with anybody. Come over here right now. Uh, uh, you know, anything you want, you can have. I was like, you mean I can write my own contract? He said, yes. What I did, I came over. I said, I need this, I need that, I need that. They said, okay, and I said, this is great. Lennox himself lacked eccentricity, a boring hairstyle, ordinary boxing shorts, and a banal nickname, Lion. I'm laid back to a point where, you know, uh, even Manny was trying to think of different ways to motivate me. Uh, sometimes he would shout at me, you know, it's like, you know, you can shout at me. My mother used to shout at me, <laughs> so I'm used to that. What made him memorable was his boxing. In less than a year, Lewis had 11 early victories over classically matched opposition. Another right place, the guard gone. Yeah, the right's getting through, and he's down, and he won't get up. He doesn't want to take too many of those, though. Oh, and a left hook. He then faced former champion Osvaldo Acasio. Lewis bombarded Acasio on the midsection and drove him into a clinch. A little bit more. Then he used the jab. He knew how to work the heavyweights. His roundhouse kicks went around the Brit. However, he was often planted and became an easy target for uppercuts. I'm all, I'm all in, I'm all in fight now. He's doing the right thing. As a result, Lewis read him. Smile on occasion. Oh yes, he's supposed to his feet and really start digging him in. And passed with confidence. Oh, he's got him. Only one possible winner. Lewis could then spoil his record of disqualifications. That, that will happen. Oh, that could be a disqualification on Lewis's part. He hit AC. But his opponent courageously step it up to fall by knockout. What, what, the Scotty, what they want to see Lennox do is fight. Lewis, 25, took the European title against Jean-Marie Sahane. And stepped up to take on undefeated Gary Mason, Mason has fought several heavyweights and has only taken three fights to a decision. The two promising Jamaican descendants battled for the British title and a chance to move on to the next stage of their careers. Lewis dampened his opponent's activity with clan cheese and moved constantly. As Maimon moved to the middle, Lewis turned on the power punches. That's a beautiful He didn't forget to use his jab at range. Gary Mason. Mason got tired of running and started to take his chances, opening up with a series of punches. Lennox responded with aimed punches to the right eye. Mason said that he's hurt again by right hand, but comes instantly back. And the more the eye closed, the more comfortable the lion became. Some of Mason's attacks were still successful, but 
Lewis immediately returned the missed punches. The one really big punch, the battered face of Mason, and a good short shot. Right? In the seventh round, the referee stopped the fight due to an obscenely swollen hematoma. Having earned a 15-0 record, Lewis made a trip to the USA, where he was awaited by Mike Weaver, a former champion who had fought almost all the elite of the 80s, but it was already 91. America believed in Tommy Morrison, Tyson was under investigation, and Evander Holyfield. The veteran couldn't handle Lewis's speed. The lion pelted the former champion with heavy series of punches. Blocking counterattacks. And in the fifth round, Lewis took him out with his trademark right jab. And that punch would be felt by the best heavyweights of the hour in the future. In the United States, Lennox was promoted by Dan Davis' main events company, but the public immediately disliked the Brit. They were too used to the fact that the heavyweight division had been American for 100 years. Since then, Lewis has combined wins at home and in the U.S. The play away and the fight away from him in the long run. He got even with Terrell Biggs for an Olympic defeat. Oh, against Bo. And there's another right hand, and that might be it. And racked up a few more passing victories. On the verge of finishing this off. Now the crashing right, and this time just missing its target. Oh, what a right uppercut! And another one. Lennox was seriously challenged by Don Owen Red Doc. The Canadian fought brightly in the late 80s and gave two tough fights to a young Mike Tyson. Lewis worked his right hand, Good. kept his distance, tipped. <laughs> But he came out not to dance, but to wreck. Red Doc didn't have a minute to recover. He missed a double again. A series on the middle, and it was over. A year earlier, Tyson had fought 12 rounds with Redek. Lewis finished the fight in two rounds, sending his opponent to the floor three times. The audience began to realize what danger the Briton was carrying. Two weeks later, Riddick Bull, whom Lewis had beaten in the Olympic final, gave the fight of the year and took all the belts from Holyfield. Lennox was the WBC mandatory challenger. The boxers had a month to agree on the fight. Rock Newman, Bo's manager, made Lewis two offers. Either get $3 million, but give Bo 90% of the show's proceeds, or give up the title and make an interim fight. Lewis' manager, Frank Maloney, rejected both options and offered to split the revenue 75% to 25% in favor of the champion. Boo held a press conference where he publicly threw the WBC belt in the trash. Soon after the belt, the American's career went there as well. I realized that Riddick Bo was running for me. That's why I called him Chicken Bo. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, I remember what you said when I won the gold medal, that we would meet in professionals. Now you have the opportunity to fight me and you throw the belt away. So obviously you're scared. And you know what? I don't really blame it all on Riddick Bo. Rock Newman was yeah, the cause of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rock Newman realized that his gravy train was going to be ended if, if I ever boxed Riddick Bo once again. Because the professional aspect is different. Have more time, and I would really put a hurting on it. So he didn't want that. So they came up with the scandal of throwing the belt away, which is a, was a disrespect to, to the people that held the belt before him. Muhammad Ali, 
Jack Johnson. So that belt was a, a, a important belt in all of boxing. So when he did that, he really disgraced himself. The meeting never took place. Lennox won the vacant WBC title, becoming the first British heavyweight champion since Bob Fitzsimmons, who won the title back in 1897. Lewis's first defense was against Tony Tucker, a former champion who went through the meat grinder of the 1980s, losing only by decision to Tyson. The American had 48 wins and four dozen knockouts to his credit, but he was past his peak. Both boxers were able to hit with jab, but Lennox was better at shortening the distance. Tucker was countering him. What things to say. Well, Bobby, this is the final roundup. Lewis tried to control his opponent with his front hand, masking his right punches. <laughs> Hook on the way, out of the clinch, and Tucker saves in the corner. And he came up on the American didn't cover that hole in the defense, and Lewis has a shot at it. When you've never been an aggressive fighter, and at six foot five, they will nullify. Oh, look at the right. Tucker first. It just came all the way. First knockdown of Tucker's career. Another right cross from Lewis. Back, but not here. Clean. It wasn't the London Bridge. The Britons got his arsenal on the line. Nullified each other's power a little bit. But Tucker held on and the fight returned to a calm pace under Lennox's control. Just that, three fights back. Low blow warning. Nothing looked like trouble. Just another one, but back comes Tucker. It's hit or me when you get to this stage. Lewis relaxed and began to miss. His hands down getting a little cocky. Tucker had his chance. He can throw it without the right hand. Now he throws the right hand back and he's fighting back. Maybe the, the best punch of the the start of the third round was marked by another twist. Finish him off. Tony Tucker unloading. In the end, Lewis won by a solid decision, but problems with loss of concentration will continue to haunt him. Lennox Lewis. Next in line of challengers was Frank Bruno, the premier British boxer of the 80s, who came closest to a championship title. He had many resounding victories and suffered three painful defeats. Guess who stopped him last? The press labeled the encounter a fight for Britain. Bruno had lived in England all his life and used that fact in the war of words. He didn't think Lewis was British because he had boxed for Canada and later moved to California. And the local audience rose to the defense of the veteran. Dennis. That's what it's all about tonight. This is a you're a more nervous experience for him. It's a big British fight. Lewis started tentatively and looked for the moment. It's a better mover of Bruno there. Bruno pressed all the time, throwing jabs. And he's taken the fight to Lennox. He deprived the champion of space and did not allow him to launch attacks. Pretty elusive. Good shots from Bruno. Two more jabs. Chance of Bruno. Ring around. Got it. Lennox had to get into his punches after the second round. However, he still allowed his opponent to stay at a comfortable distance. Success because he's using his strength, he's forcing the fight. Well, that was a key thing that he had to do. The pattern of the fight began to change after a mailman from Lewis at the Equator. Oh, that's good from Lewis too, Jack. Bruno went forward to get back up and missed. Look at Bruno here, coming up from the left hook, catches him. The challenger tried to survive, but if you're hurt by a lion, that's the end for you. Lewis carries on a relentless assault here, pouring on the punishment. I thought for a moment there, he was stopping that right uppercut. Lewis here, and Bruno is on the verge of going. He won't take a lot more at this time. It is stopped, and Lennox is still the WBC. Bruno once again stopped one step away from the title, but ironically, all of his offenders were soon losing themselves. After the win, Lewis faced Phil Jackson, who had racked up a 31 record over a five-year career. The Briton won a quiet, no-holds-barred affair. The referee stopped the fight after the second knockdown. Would he have the same? There he goes. This is going to be...
With a record of 25 Nero and three title defenses, the 29-year-old Lewis stepped up to take on Oliver McCall. The drug-addicted American's record with five losses didn't look too good, but he had only lost to the top in competitive fights, could punch tightly and had never been knocked out. Lewis was looking behind McCall's back and had a long, awaited fight against Riddick Bowe arranged in advance. The champion again had a quiet round. I can see that, I mean. And rushed forward in the second. Difficult night for Oliver. Coming in, flicks out that job. Oh, oh a short God. right hand. That's what he said. <laughs> hey, and Lewis doesn't look. Lewis got up. Uh, it's a situation where you make one big mistake, and, it, and the mistake was leaving yourself open and getting caught with a, with a shot. I kind of blame the referee as well. I'm thinking, you know, I'm the champion. I get knocked down in the second round. It's not like I've been through fifth, uh, 10 rounds of, of hard boxing. I got knocked down. I got knocked down. I got up off my feet. And the referee prevented him from continuing. Over. What a shocker <laughs> here in the heavy defeat shook Lewis' world. They should have counted, but he counted me out. And at the end of the day, you know, it's better to live and fight another day. First of all, he decided to fire his trainer, Pepe Correa. The Puerto Rican became famous with Ray Leonardo. But during two years of working with him, Lewis stopped progressing. McCulloch was prepared for the fight by Emmanuel Stewart, who was specially invited for this purpose by the promoter of the American Don King. However, the coach's relationship with King quickly deteriorated, and at this point Lewis's team contacted him. To keep Stewart, Don even offered him to work with Tyson, who came out of prison. So um, you then start having skirmishes with Don King. You had a lot of legal su suits with him, and, and you won most of them, didn't you? you yeah. Won uh, all of them? For no, every one. Every one. Every one of the legal It was 1995. While Iron Mike sat around, the internet started coming into homes. Tarantino was conquering Hollywood, and a new generation of boxers had grown up in the heavyweight division. Lennox returned to action against Lionel Butler, who had suffered a string of defeats early in his career, but then went on to win 16 fights in a row. He got Lewis in the first minute. The Brit then began to dominate. It seemed that the only thing that distinguished him from the old Lennox was his fashionable dreadlocks. But he used his left hook more often than not. And he started his attacks with crosses. That's how Lev got the fighter to the floor and then got him to the ropes. Stewart was not satisfied with the performance could not win faster. Nevertheless, the Lions' training was just beginning. The Brit turned out to be the main nightclub party animal Emmanuel knew, but he was also a very thoughtful and sensitive man. Lewis warmed up on Justin Fortune. Of Fortune is caught here in terrible trouble and it stopped oh, even before he hit the floor. Right. Meanwhile, McCool lost to Frank Bruno. Lennox wanted to fight him, but his opponent was taken away by Tyson, who beat the Brit again. Lewis, on the other hand, came out for Tommy Morrison, Great White Hope. This label appeared in the tens of the last century, when the conservative part of America was waiting for a white boxer's victory over the great Jack Johnson, starting with Floyd Patterson, and until the mid-80s, only black boxers became heavyweight champions and the press continued to label them as such. In the 90s, Tommy Morrison became the White Hope, a striking knockout artist, movie actor, and conqueror of women's hearts. He came into the fight with a 45-2 record and 39 knockouts under his belt, and he was only 26 years old. There was no way he could find the distance with Lewis. 
Lennox saw his crowning left and would catch him on his own as he got closer. Gradually, he increased the tonnage of punches and dropped in the fifth round. Tommy made it to the gong, but looked helpless in the next segment. A powerful hook ended the beating. Morrison would soon be diagnosed with HIV and his career would come to a standstill. At the age of 44, AIDS would take his life. Lewis, meanwhile, would seek a meeting with Mike Tyson. The champion's promoter, Don King, had other plans. He paid the Brit four million for Mike to fight Bruce Seldon. Why wouldn't Tyson fight you? Well, Tyson... He did eventually, but yeah, on this particular occasion. Tyson, as I, as I realized, he never liked boxing big guys. You know, he had a fear against boxing big guys. And he felt that he, Evander's, Evander Holyfield would be a lot easier than I was. And he was definitely wrong about that. And Lewis's opponent was Ray Mercer with a 23-3 record. It's worth noting that Lennox has had a strange tendency throughout his career. He fought great against the strongest boxers and didn't look good against weaker ones. Ray Mercer did his homework and chose the most successful strategy, constant pressure, sharp jab, control of space. Mercer goes down. Lewis tried to work in a variety of ways. He threw in series, processed the body, aimed with his right hand. Open up. Because but Ray continued to press, and the small ring did not allow Lennox to use his legs. Mercer just whistled an uppercut that just missed Lewis's chin. Not throwing, just this pivoting and wind up getting popped. He accepted this power fight. Disaster tonight. That's the Dallas Cowboys to parlay. Good uppercut again, two punches. And missed a lot. They like to think they can slug on the inside, already hanging open. And I gotta wonder how much nervousness Lewis still took most of each round. Four punch combination, you do something. Now he didn't, he's getting hit because he's outside not doing anything. Well, two right hands by and Lennox. In the second half of the fight, Mercer exploded and forced his opponent to chop. Yeah. He gets inside, doesn't keep his hands up, and Mercer's trying to get up one good shot, even though he didn't count. After the eighth round, Coach Stewart pumped up his ward. He's got to go like that all the way now. We can't lose no more rounds and the Briton gave a good ending. Larry Holmes in some business. It's an approach you made to He's going to win this fight. He's got to have this round. Round in the last, only because... He hit more often, delivered more power blows, but the audience booed the decision. <laughs> Lewis was more concerned about the WBC title, which Tyson left for the fight of the decade against Evander Holyfield. After Bowie lost to Moore, he was considered an easy target for Mike. But it was in the fight with Tyson that Holyfield's renaissance began. Oh, Holyfield! Lewis fought against old friend Oliver McCall for the vacant title. Two years after the last fight, he managed to defeat Oleg Moskayev and James Stanton ahead of schedule. And in the rematch with the Lion, at first, he fought with dignity. Lewis hit hard. But McCall was advancing. Deuce in attack and lightning fast overhaul to meet. Oliver felt it. As a result, he began to avoid combat. And whenever Lewis attacked, he turned on his acting skills. That was easy, but uh, weird in one sense, because a lot of people always stop me about it and say, hey, you know, they still remember that fight where, how did that, they always ask me, how did that feel, uh, him crying in the ring? I always say I was prepared for everything, you know, anything he came at me with, I was prepared for. Crying, I wasn't prepared for that. During the break after the fourth round, I even burst into tears. And I still remember uh, Manny in the corner, Emmanuel Stewart in the corner saying to me, He's saying, well, what are you doing? I said, the man's crying. This is in the fifth round, yeah. wasn't it? You know, <laughs> man's crying, what do you want me to do? He said, well, if he doesn't want to fight, you make him fight. Go out there and beat him up. 
So then I went out there with more of an effort. The referee stopped the fight when McCall started looking at the walls after the missed shots. McCall explained his behavior as cunning tactics, but they did not believe him and sent him to a psychiatric clinic. He will continue to fight with himself and show examples of rare athletic longevity. And 31-year-old Lewis will go through the heavyweight division like a lump. Paul Anzi Golota crushed everyone in the mid-90s. He went 28-0 before knocking out Riddick Bow twice and losing by disqualification both times. Stewart gave Lewis a set to stun the bully, and he delivered. That evening, Lewis's right cross flew like it was home. Shannon Briggs is a muscle-bound 30-to-1 puncher, but Lennox has shown that boxing is a science. False confidence, but yet well, a left hand, hand comes left in. Hand. And all of a sudden, Lewis has his hands down. Another oh, combination another right. from Lewis. Nice check. Right. Oh, oh the stops the fight on what looked... The invincible Zelko Mavrovich lasted all 12 rounds, although he lost heavily. Oh, it's time to fight for the absolute championship. Lewis held the WBC belt, while Holyfield held the other two titles. The 36-year-old veteran defeated Tyson twice took convincing revenge against Muir and defeated the young Von Bean. The meeting of the two champions was supposed to crown the era of the 90s of the Royal Division. Lennox did not swing. He tried to crush the enemy using his size. Former light heavyweight kept his distance and was forced to retreat. His plan was to quickly approach each other. But Lewis defended himself well and with his activity deprived the enemy of a window for attacks. The upper deck. And he comes out in a very aggressive... Holyfield sometimes broke through with his streaks. Landed a left hook inside and lands a right hand, and Lewis is stunned. But they did not remain unanswered. Lewis, seeming... Lewis won round after round. The upper cut. Lewis lands a right hand and on the defensive. Right hand. Not throwing many punches. Uppercut, uppercut. And in the second half, once again, it lost concentration from the eighth round, giving the initiative to the American. Just like he's doing now. Here comes the aggressiveness. Here. <laughs> right. And he did. Good right hand. The two cuts I got was from headbutts, and it was Evander Holyfield. And I said, boy, and this people always ask me, do you feel bad about that? I said, well, not really. I, I don't mind getting a cut, and you know, the reward was uh, millions of dollars after that, so it was good. Before the final three minutes, Stewart told Lennox he was losing, so the Briton delivered a powerful finish. Wins. It will the draw in this match came as a shock to the spectators. Even, even a draw, the decision is even a draw. And so if you ask Evander Holyfield who won the first one, he said, well, he did because that's what the judges say. And I'm saying, come on, admit it. You know I beat you. You weren't, uh, when, when you left the ring, you were in pain. I passed you on the wall throwing up. So uh, you knew I, I beat you at that time. The judges were probably influenced by the ubiquitous Don King, Holyfield's promoter. A week later, the fighters agreed to a rematch, which caused less excitement, but turned out to be more entertaining. Holyfield drew conclusions from the first meeting. He walked forward and forced close combat. From his corner, he doesn't want to fight. Off the round one result. Lewis moved and met. Turner's instructor, Lewis, able to stick the jab in Holyfield's face. But he looked constrained, allowing himself to be hit. Lewis is bending down, and Holyfield... Evander cheered him up. Evander last slid past Evander's ear, though. Yeah. And in the fifth round, he used his head and almost flew out of the ring. 
And Halpern telling Holyfield to watch his head as Lewis goes under and then over with the right hand. After that, Lewis already turned on his signature twos. Nobody wanted to give in. Holyfield off and lands. The brawl began. Lewis now. Lewis rallying again. Combination. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Lewis to the body. His own right hand lands flush. It was his measured boxing that brought success to Lewis, not his fighting. Oh, now he is into trouble with only Holyfield. So it's a much more even fight. But despite everything we're saying, Lewis has landed some shots in this round. And Vander takes over. And he gave me a chance to get in. Vander Holyfield won't back down anybody. Uppercut lands for Lewis. Hold on. Lennox goes back to the body and the uppercut. Holyfield is an excellent boxer. Knows what to do and when to do it. Kind of effort the two fighters are putting forth. But still, Lewis throws never begun bleeding again. This time, Holyfield tried to take the ending. The British actively interfered with his plan. Lewis has got to fight. Came back. In five more seconds of fighting. At the end of 12 rounds, Lennox Lewis became the absolute world heavyweight champion. Lennox Lewis! Second fight where we came together. I would say it was a lot closer than the first fight. It was a better but, fight. Yeah, it was a better fight. But if, when you look at the scoring, scoring had me miles ahead. Well, I was at ringside for both of them, actually. In the first fight, you threw three, 348 punches. Holyfield threw 130. And a woman judge, Eugene Williams, said that Holyfield um, threw more punches. Uh, and she gave it to him by two points. Larry <laughs> O'Connell, the British judge, had it level. And Stan Christodoulou from South Africa, who refereed the McGuigan Pedroza fight, yeah. who's a great judge, he actually had you winning. And I think most of us at ringside who yeah. studied the fight had you winning that yeah, first couldn't, time. I couldn't understand the uh, British judge at that time. Like, how do you have it even? No one in the heavyweight division since Lewis has collected all the belts. But the task of modern boxers has become more difficult. Previously, there were three main versions. Now there is a fourth WBO. Lennox himself briefly enjoyed his status. He was scheduled to defend the title against John Ruiz, but wanted to face Michael Grant first. And the American's promoter, the same Don King, took the WBA belt from Lewis during the trial. Grant is a an easy prey for the seasoned Lewis. In the first round, the champion sent the challenger to the floor three times. Lewis lands a right hand on the top of the head. Grant trying to fire back. Lewis has still got to be In the second round, Grant continued to survive the uppercut, landed the and still reached his limit. And for the moment, Lewis looks punched out as he landed so. That's it. That's it. A short uppercut from the clinch put an end to it. Francois Bata lasted even less. What he's doing is working. It's a big right hand. And he steps out of the ring. Huge shot. But the fight with the machine. David Tua went the entire distance. Lewis turned on the smart bike and rode to victory by decision. Lennox <laughs> Lewis. South Africa has produced some outstanding heavyweights in boxing. Jerry Kudea, Corey Sanders, Francois Bata, and they were all white. After the victory over apartheid, South Africa needed examples of successful black people. Promoter Cedric Kushner proposed a fight between Lewis and Hasim Rahman there. The fight grabbed headlines in Africa, a clear parallel to Ali and Foreman's jungle rumble. Rahman was not foreman. He almost defeated Moskayev, but was knocked out. He almost beat Tua, but lost by knockout. The only serious scalp on his team was Corey Sanders, but he came into the fight in better shape than the champion. Lewis, it seems, underestimated his opponent, combined training with filming, flew to the fight site 12 days in advance, and the arena was in the mountains, and he looked much fatter than usual. Everybody thought that, you know, going 
three days and just shooting a movie part really interrupted my training. It wasn't that situation, it was, that wasn't the situation. The situation was more the high altitude. Uh, South which, Africa. Yeah, in South Africa that really affected me because it really threw off my timing. And Hasim Rachman was uh, in South Africa a lot earlier than I was. And that was the first time I actually have ever fought at high altitude. And when I seen the smaller guys fight, they never missed a beat. They were just 100 percent. I'm like, the altitude's not even affecting them. You know, I walk up a flight of stairs and it's like, <sighs> I have to take a deep breath. Or even when I was sparring over there, it's like, I'm sparring and I have to come a step back and <sighs> take a couple of deep breaths. And I was like concerned about that aspect. So that kind of threw me off. He moved harshly although he caught his opponent with long attacks. A mistake in his career. I see the whole tempo of this contest starting to pick. And achieved it in the fifth round. Oh, oh he's got him! He's got him! Yeah. He yeah. got careless and he's got him! Oh. Oh. Lewis has gone! There's another upset! And, uh, you know, uh, Hasim Rockman threw an unbelievable punch, which I happened to have my chin in the way of. So, uh, it was a great punch by his his point of view, and uh, it hit me. And I, you know, I look at that as you can't walk in the rain without getting wet. What is it like when that's over and you're sitting there and you know you lost, but you know that under the right circumstances, this guy is not at your level? Uh, in fact, you know, my problem was solved before I got out of the ring. I knew what I did wrong, which was the the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It's like, ah. Uh, on another day, he, he wouldn't throw a lucky punch like that. He wouldn't hit me. And he wouldn't have a ref that, you know, was on his side as well. After the victory, Rahman came under the wing of Don King and wanted to avoid a rematch. But now Lewis himself went to court and again arranged a fight for the American. The fight after it was over, were you worried that you were going to get a, we're not going to get a rematch? Yes, I was yeah. very worried. In fact, we chased him to three courts around the world. And uh, he didn't want to fight me. And I, I, you know, if I was in this position, I wouldn't want to fight me either because, uh, you know, I'm coming back for revenge. Plus, there's a big money fight out there with Tyson, right. which he so, um, so happened to say after the fight, no more Lewis Tyson, no more Lewis Tyson. And he actually left um, South Africa without visiting Mandela. Like, why you go Africa and not visit Mandela? Mm. I did. He just wanted to get out of there. Yeah, he Take just... Take that belt and just... Yeah. And, and that $7 million that he got off of Don King. Mm. So uh, the fight got made again because after the third courtroom, uh, the judge says, whose signature is this? Hasim said it was his. You signed it? Yes. Well, you got to give him the rematch. This is You signed it to give him a rematch, so you have to give him a rematch. So he didn't want to hear that. So I was happy. So got the rematch. How long did it take? Two years. Two years. Wow. And there was all that... All those brawls in the, remember the ESPN studio when him and Rockman got into a fight? Yeah, that's They knocked right. over the table and everything? Yeah. I, he was trying to get under my skin. And uh, it was interesting because uh, he tried to get under my skin. I got a, under his skin. You know, he made a suggestion. I said, ah, I think you should ask your sister if I'm gay or not. And he goes, what? What did you say <laughs> about my sister? And, that, and that's when he kind of uh, got into a tangle. That was, that was a very interesting time. The Briton turned his legs around and shot his opponent with a jab. Use that, that's very important. He increased his advantage. Great shot. And in the fourth round, he sent Rahman to the floor. Jab for oh, wonderful shot by Lennox, who very, very well. He will be stopped. It is over. Revenge, redemption, Alex Lewis. Do you have like a most satisfying victory? Yeah. What is it? I seen Rockman. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say the rematch. The first yeah. or the second? The second one, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You that, Wally. When a guy when a guy beats you like that and then you know you could have beaten him or you should have beaten him. Is that what bothered you so much? Um no, you know what really bothered me is the fact that I gave him an opportunity. It, I gave him a fight when uh, I'm basically waiting for Tyson. I remember when that right hand landed. I remember that I was watching it at home and I threw my arms up in the air. I was oh. like, oh shit, oh, yeah. yes. Right. Right. Rahman went to sleep, Boom. sleep, sleep, it was sleep. A hammer. The American fell head first on the Don King logo.
Soon the promoter will lose his influence. Great hands, but that is style. There was only one unconquered peak left. Interested to hear. After losing to Holyfield, Mike performed inconsistently. He had a good fight with Galota, then he confidently passed Brian Nielsen and challenged Lewis. This is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. No, it wasn't like that. It was Lennox who had been following Mike for years and was waiting for this meeting. Lewis didn't have any children either, but he had great technique and heavy fists. Mike felt this at the stare down. But when you finished up in that tangle, that was, uh, you, you'd handled Tyson biting you on the leg in a press conference. That, that was not quite Lennox Lewis, was it? No, uh, it's interesting because I've never been bit on the leg by another human or even bit. And when I seen that, I was in shock. And then I realized that, you know, maybe this guy's trying to get out of the fight. So I said to myself, you know, I'm not fighting him, I'm not fighting him. And uh, then he said, then I heard that, uh, you know, he turned into a vegetarian and everything like that. So I said, okay, I'll fight him now. He's not, he's not meat hungry. He's not going <laughs> to bite me in the middle of a fight or something like that. One of the most anticipated fights in heavyweight history took place on June 8th, 2002 in the USA. Will we, we ever fight? Will we ever fight? Because Customado said that we we're going to fight. Wow. And it did happen. The ring was divided by a line of security guards to avoid conflict before the match began. We're underway! 35-year-old Mike tried to immediately hack to death 36-year-old Lennox. We are ready. Then go to that body. Go hard. But Lewis extinguished his activity. With a big right uppercut. The referee made a remark about the hold, but the weapon turned out to be not a clinch, but an uppercut. Pushing Tyson away also for the second time in this round. Tyson slowed down in the fourth round, but remained dangerous. Under control. So Lewis took his time. Cotton. And he signaled to me that the cut was caught by Tyson, did a nice shot getting inside. The further the fight went, the more obvious the advantage of the current champion became. The uppercut in the odd round was the beginning of the end. Never had a knockout past the seventh round. Lennox Lewis triple Mike Tyson with a big uppercut, and Eddie Cotton separates the fighter. Mike stood up and continued to take punches. The final blow was Lewis' signature right hand. You can't take that from me. Lennox immediately threw his hands up because he understood that they couldn't get up after something like that. The golden era of the heavyweights of the 90s was coming to an end. Oh, you can't take that from me. This guy is, there's no way I could ever be. He's just too big and too strong and he just fought a, I just appreciate him giving me a shot to fight for the title. The 2000s crept up unnoticed. Rhinestones, Clubs, Britney Spears, Klitschko Brothers. While Vladimir fought unstable then and later, Lewis's coach Emmanuel Stewart would turn him into a dominator. In the meantime, Vitali was shining in the ring. He won 32 fights and only once reached a decision. The only misfire was a shoulder injury in a fight with Chris Bird. Lennox was originally scheduled to face Kirk Jones with Klitschko scheduled to fight on the undercard it's interesting because i wasn't really fight when you know in a fight you know you go into a fight and you and mentally you know what you're going to do ahead of time for for that particular fight i felt that you know this is going to be my last fight and i wanted to fill it f finish it with style he was basically going to be the icing on my cake and um, i said that i wanted one let's go for lunch and the other one for brunch. And, uh, you know, boxing uh, tall Vitali was very awkward for me, uh, and I wasn't really prepared to box him at that time. This is a year after fighting Tyson. And, uh, you know, Tyson's a lot shorter than him and weighs a lot less. So all of a sudden, you know, HBO was saying, ah, yeah, take, 
take this date, it's open, uh, please take the date, you can beat him easy and then you can go and retire. But I realized that this man was preparing for me for a whole year. While I was resting, he was still training and preparing for me. 31-year-old Ukrainian, hungry for the title, went up against the champion. Well, Lewis. Lewis weighed 116 kilo, which was his personal best, and he came out to fight, not box. He's looking for the right hand. He's looking for the right hand over the top. Lewis does sometimes. Unconventional British boxing turned out to be convenient for Klitschko. It's a good start, this fight. He hit the jab well and didn't get lost in the exchange. Can Lewis get his jab going? Oh, well, there's a big right hand. No emotion, he said, when I heard I was fighting. Vitali shocked the champion. It took him a 10 days notice. Uh, had about four rounds of sparring with a, a six foot eight guy. So I was really adjusting in the fight while I was fighting uh, Vitali. Making this a two weeks notice and gets it with the right hand. And Lewis runs to the hole. He's hurt by the best yet from Lewis. But Klitschko. But Lewis aimed his jab. When we saw the way but and loaded heavy punches. In here. And now Lewis goes. Klitschko began to bleed. A tremendous excitement. We thought it might be dramatic. It is. There's the jab. But I think that could have. He went for the knockout, although he didn't always keep up the pace. But Emmanuel Stewart, the trainer of Lewis. And the fight turned into slugfests. Lewis, the last seven have gone at least nine rounds. Oh, he seems to be just the boss, doesn't he? Lewis looking a bit troubled and dissourcing ability as well. Klitschko is just caught. The cut above Klitschko's eye worsened and a series of clutches only made matters worse. Well, I think Lewis tonight might have met someone who's as physically strong as him. Yeah. Oh, there's the uppercut again from Lewis. During the break, the doctor stopped the fight. The cuts. The comes suddenly. And the Vitali did not agree with the decision, and besides, he was in the lead on the judges' cards. Must have been in the balance. You know, I always say, when people say, oh, you were losing the fight on points, I'm thinking, I wasn't fighting the fight to win points. I was trying to knock him out. And in boxing, you have to, if, you, if you're going to be great in boxing, there's a couple of things you have to know. You have to be good on the inside. You have to box well on the outside. You have to have, to have a great chin. You have to have good endurance. And you can't cut. You can't, your skin can't cut because uh, what happens is your skin gets cut, you start bleeding, and then all of a sudden you lose confidence. The blood gets in your eye. With uh, Vitaly's case, he had five cuts around his eye and, you know, Although I wanted to knock him out in the, in, in, the, in the fight, I didn't want to blind him. I didn't want that to be my legacy, blinding you know, the next, uh, next great boxer. So in, in essence, I think the referee did a good job with stopping the fight. He later demanded a rematch, but Lewis, 38, had other plans. He left the sport. Were you ever tempted to come back? Oh yeah, I was tempted. You know, uh, what I would do, I would, um, at night time, I would dream about me coming back and taking my title again. And then when I wake up in the morning, I would talk myself out of it. Indeed, the Briton had nothing to prove. Lewis acted selfishly in the status of champion. He violated continuity. But the enemy, victory over which would raise him higher, was no longer there. He linked together two different eras, the late 80s and early 2000s, reserving the right to decide when and how to retire. During his professional career, Lennox lost twice and avenged both defeats. He is the third boxer in heavyweight history to become world champion three times. The other two are Muhammad Ali and Evan Tarholafil. Lewis entered the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 2009 having defended 14 WBC titles. In 2016, his image was permanently placed on the association's heavyweight belt next to Tyson and Ali. He doesn't want to take too many of those, though. Oh, and a left hook! What the? Just missing its target. Oh, what a right uppercut! And another one! And a right! 
six foot five. They will nullify. Whoa! Look. Good right hand. Nice jet right. Oh! oh. Left hook by Lewis. Galana goes down. Lewis has still got to be whoa! What he's doing is working. It's a big right hand. What the? Going to get his jab for Paul. Oh, wonderful! He's got heart. Well, he's you can't take that heart. Big right hand from Lewis. And please, um, Adrian, just come up here, please. <laughs>